What's happening, party people? What's happening? I'm yours with the most special run, and welcome to, yes, another episode of 40 Years of Hip Hop, where we review 1,000 songs from 1979 to 2019, and party people, we've been mentioning it over and over again. Check us on our mixed cloud platform called Forever Hip Hop. You know, if you've been following us right now, you know this is where you can get the musical part of the podcast. You know, you could actually listen to the music that we're reviewing. We've got mixtapes, so check it out. It's going to be officially open by, I would say, the first week of November. Just keep that in mind. And for the people, today we will be reviewing Climax. Girl Shit by Slum Village, which came out in the year 2000 from the album Fantastic Volume 2. But before we fall deep into the review, so party people, let's take a look at Mr. Ron's Week. That's right. So, yeah, so party people have been watching Wu-Tang, an American saga season 2, and it's good good i'm really enjoying the show and i believe i'm already at episode six and there's a great scene where you see how the rizza whose acting is a little over the top from my liking you know he's always so on point he's always so intense but yeah and the way that he's making the beat and it was so original the way that they visualized him making the beat, you know, fast, uh, slowing down a sample, making it uh, go faster, adding, you know, tracks, you know, to the mix, deleting them. It was really, really, really uh, 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 fresh, you know. It was really innovative. Anyways, check it out. You know, Wu-Tang and American Saga Season 2. It's now playing on Hulu, I believe. And party people, so what have I been listening to this week? So, uh, you know how I like to kick it, you know, sometimes. Uh, so I'm really into this lo-fi artist called Osha, which is just instrumental. I know, I know I, I can be a tad boring with my instrumental music, but, you know, whenever you, you're working, you know, I don't want to be bothered with lyrics, you know, so that's why I really like lo-fi. And there's one artist that, uh, from my point of view, that stood out a little bit. His name is Osha. And uh, I'm really feeling his 2021. And the track of the week, party people, I'm going to go with Black Soprano Family. It's over. Featuring Benny the Butcher, Heems, BSF, and Rick High. It's a video that I found on YouTube, but it's also live. There's literally like a live band playing them. It, it kind of like, it makes me... It reminds me of The Roots, but gangsta. <laughs> That's the way I could describe it, with the live band playing in the background and the guys just spitting some like gangsta rhymes. And yeah, shit is dope. Check it out. Check it out. And party people, of course, make sure you check out my mellow, my man, the G-Man, as next week you will be reviewing Dipset Anthem by The Diplomats featuring Jules Santana and Cameron. Yeah, you know, the Dipset guys are I, right, you know. Sporty people, let's get back to our review of Climax Girl Shit. And why did I choose this song? Very simple, guys. It's early 2000, okay, and in Montreal, there's this record store called Archambault, you know which is a huge record store. They also sell musical instruments. And as I'm doing my weekly digging, you know, I, I, I fell on uh, Slum Village. I was like, okay, so let me sample it. Fell in love with it right away. It was so fresh. The sound was unique. It sounded like nothing like, like I've heard before. It was uh, uh, really on point. Really enjoyed it. Really, really, really enjoyed it. And totally just... That's what actually made me... I knew of Jay Dilla at that time through Tribe Call Quest and Farside, but I really was like, ah, oh, okay, this is this is the guy. This is uh, the guy behind uh, all of these, like, really unique beats, you know, unique beats, because there's a period now. 
just like all producers, not everything that J. Dilla did was amazing. But there's a period, like I would say from like late 90s, early 2000s, J. Dilla was untouchable. You know, he was untouchable. Everything that he did was just like outstanding. Yeah, so the record is about polygamy. Three sums, you know, that was interesting, but it's done with class. You know, like lyrically, it's not uh, about like hoes and you know, no, no, the way that it's, it's actually, yeah, they are, the guys are rhyming about, you know, basically wanting to have as much sex as possible with, you know, different ladies, especially this time it's more of a threesome that's, you know, the kind of like the theme of the song. But we'll check out the lyrics a little bit later on. Yeah, so, originality. Is this song original? If so, how? Where Jay Dilla's production is original, for sure. Okay, so that helped 100%. And the way that I would describe it, it's like, De La had, I don't know, had a baby with a Tribe Called Quest, and that baby smoked a lot of weed and did some shrooms. And you would have, you would have a slum village. That's the best way I think I could describe it. So party people, just, you know, to situate you a little more, just a few rappers from that year, 2000. So of course you have DITC, you know, Fat Joe, Big L, Diamond D to name a few. Big Pun, Eminem. Jay-Z, the woo was starting to fall off a little bit just to, you know, situate you a little bit, you know. So fun fact, party people, Slum Village was formed in the mid-90s when original members Batin, T3, and JD began to make music together in high school, you know, Pershing High School in Detroit, uh, Michigan. So courtesy of this cognitive, this is why party people for original originality I give it a five on five, that's right. Delivery party people, delivery which consists of lyrics and flow. So I'll start with my quotable, of course, I took a Batin's verse, which is the third one I believe, so let's do this. I know you're yearning for sexual longevity. My name is Batin Rasu Rasi. Tantric master sex, two or three, ecstasy, calling you, calling me. Oh, so yeah, so Batim is laying, laying the, the sex rhyme. So I know you're hearing for sexual longevity, so that means, of course, you know, the girl don't want no two-minute brother. You know, my name is Batim Rasu Rasi, tantric master. So yo, so if you don't know about tantric sex, look it up. Only good can come out of it, party people. Yeah, only good can come out of it. You know, look up tantric sex, master, you know, two or three, hence the threesome theme that is the overall theme of this song. Ecstasy calling you, calling me, you know, we're gonna do this together. Party people, so, <clears throat> lyrically, the guys are dope, okay? The guys are dope. Uh, however, I have to say that for me, Slum Village is mostly about the music as a group, okay? Almost to the point where the voices are almost instrumental uh, instruments as, as well. For delivery, which consists of lyrics and flow, and go with a 3.75 on 5, courtesy of Genius.com. Production party people, which consists of beat, mixing, scratching, engineering, and all that jazz. So, ah, such a soulful vibe, unique baseline, etheric feeling, well layered, but somewhat still remains very simple, okay? Produced by Jay Dilla, of course, who gave us some like outstanding, very unique sounds throughout uh, the years, may he rest in peace. So basically, Jay Dilla running by the far side, which was released in 1995, The Light, by Common, which was released in uh, 2000. Didn't You Know by Erica Badu, 2000 as well. Stakes Is High, 1996 by De La Soul. And one of my favorites, The Red by uh, J-Lib. So J-Lib is basically 
um, album that features JD and Mad Lib together. So you can just imagine the red, amazing, definitely gonna make the top 1000. So, of course, three samples deep Clap de Lune by Isao Tomita, Space Intro by Steve Miller Band, and Fly Like a Needle by, of course, the Steve Miller Band 1976. It was sampled six times, and again, I, I was really looking for like, okay, you know, a something, I would say like, some when they sampled it, that it would do something like really unique. The best that I found was uh, Dear Dilla by Five Dog, you know, which was released in 2014. And there was also two remixes, one in 2010 by Slum Village, and another one in 2005 by Kid Sublime. And party people, courtesy of who sample, and this is why, for production, I gave it a five on five. This is a perfect beat, you know. You could practice freestyles to it. You could practice singing, or you could just listen to the damn thing on the instrumental tip. And it's it's live. It's live, party people. All right, so peep now. Let's take a look at our top five. So what we well we got the top five slum vill, slum village songs. So I'll go with the look of love, okay, which was a fantastic volume one climax, which we're reviewing right now. Falling in love, selfish featuring Kanye, which was released in two thousand two, and a scheming, which was actually pretty good, which was released in two thousand ten. So this is the Slum Village Top 5. And party people, we will release it on our what? Mixcloud platform. That's right. <clears throat> so party people, before we get back into the review at 40 Years of Hip Hop, we use Buzzsprout for our podcast. They get your show listed on every podcast platform available. We were able to get to 10,000 downloads within a year. As a Buzzsprout uh, member, you will get a great looking podcast platform, an audio player that you can drop into any other website, even WordPress, okay? You will even benefit from detailed analytics and tools to promote your episodes, like audio video snippets of your podcast called Soundbites. However, for me, my thing is that I get to generate a second revenue by talking about something that I'm passionate about. Think about it. Are you a fan of something? Try uh, podcasting about it. It's easy, fun, and can generate a second revenue. Get started for free. No credit card required. Cancel anytime. No contracts. And party people, it doesn't stop there. No, it doesn't. After your second invoice, you will receive a $20 Amazon gift card, party people. Link below in our episode notes. Party people, bus prep is the way to go. All right. Relevance, party people, and longevity. Is this song relevant? Was it able to stand the test of time? And if so, how? Well, <clears throat> well, the way that I see it, guys, this song is always going to be in my top something, top 100, top 50. I love this track. I find it's uh, original. I find it's it's nasty because we are talking about three songs, but it remains also very classy at the same time. So of course, when I'm looking at that, of course nowadays, the only way you could see if someone is hot is by checking out their YouTube channel or their social media. So YouTube views for 67,000 views for the video it's it's not much for the video however just for the song we're over at 1 million listens 1 million 146 thousand two hundred and seventeen so that's not bad that's not bad you know not only that my man just jammed and reacted to it you know he enjoyed it you know he enjoyed it so for relevance party people so this is definitely something that is gonna resonate with older heads and just like serious hip-hop fans in general. 
Fun fact, party people. So the group was formed by three members, rapper Batin, okay, and which he passed in 2009, T3, the rapper, okay, and which is actually the only original member of the group, producer Jay Dilla, who passed away in 2006. The thing is, Dilla had left the group in 2001 to pursue a solo career, and Batim left the group due to mental health issues after Jay Dilla's death. So yeah, T3 is basically the only surviving member of the original lineup. <clears throat> Also, the group also included Jay Dilla's uh, little brother, Illa J. Okay, now, but now the group currently exists as a duo of T3 and producer Young RJ, and also El Zai, which for me was my favorite group, my, my favorite add on to the slum village. El Zai was part of the group for a couple of years, but decided to leave to pursue a solo career. So, shout out to El Zai. And for relevance, party people, and longevity, I give it a 3.5 on 5. <clears throat> Powerful impact, boom, from the canon. Was this song impactful? Party people, like I said, this song impacted me, okay? Oh, I love this song. I love the artistry behind it. The instrumental, like I said, is perfect. Not only that, but it, it added a certain vibe, you know, uh, that... You don't have to be nasty, you know, to get down with 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 some, you know, sex rhymes, you know. And I thought that the way that the guys uh, did the lyrics, it was pretty original. But it was also done with, yeah, it was smart, you know. It was it, it was it was smart, and that's what I re really 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 enjoyed about that. I also have to say that J T. La influenced a lot of people in the producing game i would say like one person that i find that not that copied dilla but is that is somewhat similar at times is oh my god i'm totally drawing a blank high tech dg high tech which is a talib Kuali's partner i find sometimes high tech beats could be very derivative of jay dilla's but you know hey that's the way I see it. The album did not chart, but it doesn't matter. You know, in the streets, it's a banger. You know, everyone who knows a good hip hop, quality hip hop, would definitely know uh, that track and know Slum Village and Jay Dilla. And this is Wire Party People for Impact. I give it a four on five. And here are my final thoughts and recap. So, of course, originally I gave it a five on five original track yes due to uh, three things one the instrumental okay which will we will see a little bit later on the topic and not only that but the way that the topic was treated okay totally original the delivery 3.75 you know nice nice lyricism but nothing you know groundbreaking nothing that would it's gonna be like wow you know these guys are good you know they're good MCs, and that's that. You know, production. I'm going with a five because yo, that's a perfect beat. Uh, relevance three point five. You know, like not not everyone is down with Slum Village. You know, not not everyone is down to be that. I would say like artistic or to be that intellectual. You know, some people they just want it to be lit. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, so a production five relevance on lo and longevity 3.5 and impact four. Again, I want to say that Jay Dilla was one of uh, those producers that impacted hip hop culture. And yeah, this is why, you know, the song gets a four. For a 21 on 25, 21.25 on 25 at 85%. So party people, thanks for sharing this moment with us. Subscribe, like, share, and party people support 40 Years of Hip Hop by buying us a coffee so that we can continue dropping this amazing Whitley podcast. Tune back next week as I will be reviewing... Oh, shoot. What will we be reviewing next week? Future. Mask off. All right. All right. Percocet, Molly Percocet.
That's right. That's what we're going to be reviewing next week. All right, party people. I'm your host with the most Mr. Ron. Wishing you a happy Honolulu. Peace. And I'm out. <laughs>